Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall up there. It says 7.36 on Friday night. Back with a look at the Breeders' Cup for Saturday and a couple in England. Uh, the couple in England today, I, I expected them to run very well on heavy ground. They had done so before, but out the back of my television anyway. I don't know where they finished up. Um... Uh, but we got our little beauty again, Sam Rogue. That's for the fourth time the little rooster has come, has flown home. I was getting a little bit worried in the stalls when she was in the stalls because what happened before, when uh, way back as a three-year-old, she got upset and it uh, upset her confidence for quite some time. Uh, but... I thought that might affect her again today, but it didn't. Start a bit slow, fast pace, finish well. And he never mentioned her at all until the last uh, the last few strides. I was watching her coming up on the first and I said, am I getting her wrong? But well, I knew it was, it was uh, the, the Roscommon colours. Uh, but uh, Grand SP as well. Uh, then been dumped back on the course, the back it on the way that I've lumped on today. Uh, even though it drifted in price. Um, and she'll only probably go up about £5 pounds for that. Uh, so we may catch her again over the winter. Ideally, five and a half furrows are suited down to the ground, but uh, they may put her up to six. It depends what races uh, um, are in the next couple of weeks. They'll get Christmas money again, I think. Um, then another rehearsed in what harem, but uh, it's 76, uh, it's probably too high. Probably needs to go down about another seven or eight pounds in Dundalk over uh, the winter and they'll pick up a race. We want to go a Luke Short in the half eight. Twelves last night is into seven to two favourite. So the bus is on. So we'll see how it goes. And then I'm doing this early because I want to be all set and ready for nine o'clock for the throwing for the Breeders' Cup 2023. A lot of stuff to go through. So we'll, we, there's two in England tomorrow. Uh, in the 142 at uh, Air, uh, Wakul. We were on this last year, same race. Uh, I think we were on it at sixes and it won at 100 to 30. And it was its first run of the season last year. And this year it has a pipe opener on on the flat, on soft ground uh, in a, a class three. So it won off 143 last year, 133. So it's eight pound higher. So it's, it was a six to one shot there earlier. I was saying it would be, with nine declared, it would be a solid sort of an each way play. Uh, Fives, sixes still there. Um, fives with the green bookie and sixes with three, six, five. Each way bet on that. And then in the 322 at Newmarket, I didn't sort of look at weathery because it's unlikely that it'll go ahead again. Uh, this is on heavy ground, a mile two, uh, listed race. Uh I'm going with the top horse, Check and Challenge. It's by Fast Company. You know what I think of the Fast Companies and Heavy Ground. But this is a listed company and it's uh, the joint top rated in the race. But if you look at the race that has been in, Group 1 the last day, Group 2 previous, like to Big Rock and Horizon Door. Uh, two uh, fringe horses. Um, uh, go all the way back. Group two listed. Group one. Group two. Group one. Group two. Um, uh, in Deauville, the last time in, in August, last August, twelve months was its last win, but it has been running pretty decent. Uh, only a four-year-old. The favourite is uh, Pride of America. Um. Amy Murphy, six to four. Oh, six to four. 
won a listed race the last time. But if you look at his previous runs uh, to the handicaps, uh, thirty inch in Rome and uh, beat Astro King by a nose. Astro King came out and won after that. Uh, that was the day Astro King was fifty to one, I think, wasn't it? But uh, let's check the betting. There's me too. And if I fancy Anton in the morning, I'll stick it up because I was nearly all day concentrating on the Breeders' Cup. We take the seven to two on offer. Uh, And on we go to the Breeders' Cup. We're going to start on the undercard. Where are we going here? Harsh, you'll be familiar with Siskane. This is the one miles five race. They used to put it down as the marathon. But they have it down now as the after thoroughbred aftercare alliance stakes um siskani at five to four there i thought it was a bit like this has stamina in abundance uh they're bringing it over there's a few pound out of it like but if you look at uh it won a listed race uh won a group three in Medan won a fir on firm ground in uh, Belmont uh, that did really sort of hosed up uh, just third in York so it likes firm ground it likes uh, a trip now this is dirt but it shouldn't be a problem uh, with top of the ground uh, on to well I get me notes here uh, on a different page. <clears throat> the office is very, uh, very out of order, and I need a, a, a secretary. Well, we'll see. Yes, the five fifty. The silver knot is uh, in the race there for uh, the boys in blue, but. Uh, was bet a few times in America and I just don't uh, I don't think um, it, it should be as short as it is and I was watching a lot of videos and I came up with and each way they're paying uh, four there a couple of bookies but panic alarm. She used to be with Jessica Harrington. Lan Franco di Tauri is in the place. I wonder will he get chopped off tonight? Uh, River Tiber isn't running in the the juvenile race tonight. Uh, juvenile turf. Uh, so will Moore ride questionable? I didn't get a chance to look. But uh, if you look at uh, uh, this horse. It moved to uh, John Sadler, and it has uh, two runs. But if if we just look at its last run, it was a good, it was a big price. They weren't too busy on it. It's in the green and with the green and white sleeves. top of the lane. The Conclude second last, continues number to lead six. It. Conclude hugs the rail and goes for home. Water horses chasing him. Kid Aztec is on the outside. RG's at the rail. Maltese Falcon in the red. Now here comes Penny Kalam with a big run and El Madera's on the outside. Suddenly wide open. Conclude El Madera's Maltese Falcon at the rail. Conclude is all hard. Conclude one at a head. Kept off a wall of horses. Maltese Falcon second. Close for third. Might have been Penny Kalam. Kent Desormo in the plate that day. No effort whatsoever. So that is a 12 to 1 shot with the green bookie. And it's 10s and 11s there. Uh, I thought if with Frankie. Frankie doesn't care now if he gets. If he gets. Uh, the only thing is about him. He doesn't care if he gets disqualified or. or uh, uh, if he's banned from riding. Because uh, it seems 
I got banned again there lately. But anyway, what can we do? It's a good price. On to the dirt mile. It was won last year by Cody's Wish. Uh, there's only uh, seven runners now, isn't there? Yeah, Algiers and Practical Move was put down the other day, wasn't it? Um, Algiers. National Treasure there, he won the Preakness. Uh, he didn't run in the, uh, the Derby. Zozos from Trap 4, he'll be out and winging and he'll be the pace angle and Cody's Wish will be behind him. Uh, Cody's Wish was beaten there uh, recently. But it was in the, that was in the Jim Dandy, wasn't it? Or was it the Whitney? The Whitney. Uh, and didn't stay at the distance. He's uh, a miler. Uh, that was stretching his stamina. Uh, I, I expect that to uh, to win again. It won last year. There's four returning champions uh, this year. Uh, and there's one from the previous year. But Zozos uh, will be out and belting it from the front. Cody's wish to pick him up in the stretch. Uh Cody's wish and, and and his short, you see, but there's a few there short ones now that we could throw into an accumulator or doubles and trebles, um, or trebles and four falls. Uh, if we get this up before tonight, you could again Tamara and Cody's wish, and there's a couple of more, uh, short ones that I think will go in. And I, I I'm a, I always try to knock the favourite if I can, but the, in these races, they're uh, that it's hard to knock them. But to some of the prices was uh, even four to five there. Um, like it's not too bad to get into a couple of doubles. And for the forecast, Zozos. On to the... I'll try and be as fast as I can. It was too long last night. On to the Phillies and Mayors. It was won by Tuesday last year, Aidan O'Brien. Um, and in the last 10, five Ireland winners. This is normally a mile and three sixteenths. It's the extra sixteenth of a mile to bring it up to a mile and a quarter this year. In Italian, was second in this last year. Choose to mow them down in the stretch, or mow it her down in the stretch run. Uh, in spiral has never ran any further than a mile so Frankie will be uh, trying to uh, be, stay in behind in, in, in Italian is a front runner and is drawn in trap one that will take the lead uh, Warm Heart ran in three group ones lately and that's my choice uh, I think that will get a good position Ryan Moore and finish it, it, Moore is good uh, in Santa Anita and he's good in the stretch run uh, and I think it'll be better even on uh, on good ground this is it winning in uh, the Prevar Mile in Longchamp it's on soft ground that day, but I, it wasn't as soft it was like good it was good to soft really it was British good to soft Mellow of the grey down the outside coming with a challenge as they head down towards the last 200 metres. Mellow Mellow is coming home strongly. Warm Heart is battling on with her though. It'll be between this pair. Warm Heart in the dark blue colours and James Doyle have won. Mellow Mellow be beaten about a neck in second. Sea Silk Road has finished off strongly and has probably grabbed C -C her position from possibly in fourth. Sea Silk Road then hosed up in 
long shop day um pre de Lark day mellow mellow didn't run near as good and blue rose sin won again so that's that's very strong for him there so i prefer one coming back and trip the two forums rather than the doubt of an, another one getting it uh in italian was beaten there recently it was beaten by uh one of the same colors different yard i think wasn't it um uh, that's going for the turf uh, i thought the the each way of playing the thing was lindy uh, the three-year-old this was behind maj maj is going in the mile at one the guineas this year but this flew up the stretch and the extra furlong will be a positive. In the Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup presented by Dixie With the white Anna. hat on the and rail. here's a Lucy Princess coming after Maj and Mission of Joy tries to find room between that pair. Maj has the lead. Mission of Joy second. A Lucy Princess third. Lindy is up to fourth and coming late. Maj still the leader. Mission of Joy. Then Lindy. Maj. Lindy running on. Maj. Lindy trying. Here's the wire. Maj takes it by a neck for O'Shane Murphy and good. That's the reason they didn't go up and trip uh, with Maj. They came back uh, to the mile because she was just running on fumes there. Uh, that's the each way I thought. Well, we just check the bet. And Spiral is the uh, is the five. Warm Heart was trees there everywhere earlier. Money for it, obviously. And Lindy is tens and twelves there. They're paying four places, some of them, and threes. Uh, where are we next? The 750 is the Phillies and Mayor Sprint. Sprint, but it's seven furlongs on the dirt. Sprint to us would be five or six furlongs, uh, but the Yanks do a different. It was won last year by Goodnight Olive. And his favourite again this year. Uh, it's a five-year-old, but a five-year-old won it in uh, 19, or 2021, 17, 14, and 2010. Uh, I, think, I think she'll go in again. Chad Brown. Chad loves... He loves the turf. I like Chad on the turf, but he's a good trainer. He'll get them right. But it got beaten the last year, but it was beaten by Echo Zulu. But it had beaten Echo Zulu when it mattered last year. Uh, this was in the ballerina in Saratoga. It's, uh, Echo Zulu is out for this year. He's, uh, their records hurt her. nearly identical as they square off once again. Echo Zulu on the inside. And good night, Olive. One, two in the ballerina with a furlong left to go. And Echo Zulu puts her away. Opening up through the stretch. Echo Zulu, most impressive in the ballerina. I think that, uh, I think she'll win. If everything goes right for her, um, similar to last year, she's uh, Chad Brown. All these top trainers in America, they're thinking of, they're like Willie Mullins, thinking of the big day. Um, Chad Brown and Brad Cox, Bob Baffert, Richard Mandela, they're all they're all thinking, they'll, they'll have her ticking properly tomorrow. Uh, the each way play in this race, is uh Kirsten Bosch. It's a twenty to one shot. This is a closer. So if there's a good fast pace to aim at this baby will be coming. Now if you look at there, she's behind 
fifth behind Adair Manor, second behind Adair Manor, and fourth behind Adair Manor. Adair Manor has won five rows going in the distaff. But they were all over six furlongs on six and a half. And this is their first time going at seven. I think the extra half a furlong will suit her. She has a good engine. She has a good toe. And kicking for home. Ida in the center of the track has a lot of work to do. Kirsten Bosch is underway in the center of the racetrack. And Elm Drive there inside the final eighth of a mile. Clearly unhinged. Here's Kirsten Bosch with a big run. And Kirsten Bosch with those giant strides goes on by to win the Chillingworth under Hector Berrio. Clearly unhinged was second. Edith I know that was only a minor stakes race, but she looks like the extra furlong and a 20 to 1 and each way each way odds. I'm picking one for people that might all we need is one of them big ones or a couple of them to get a few of them to get placed and we'll be uh, in clover. Uh, that's the the Phillies and Mayors sprint. Next is the turf. Normally this would be no, it wouldn't be. Uh, the turf. The mile turf. What time is this? At 8.30. It was won uh, by Modern Games last year for Charlie Appleby. And he won it the year before as well uh, with Space Blues. Europe has won it the last three years. Maj is the favourite. That's the one we've seen running earlier there. It's uh, the one the 1,000 guineas. It has pace. It'll be up there and it's drawn six. It should be out and winging. Um, Lindy now. We'll get an idea of that form earlier because when Lindy is running a couple of, a couple of races earlier. I'm on Songline. I was looking for it for last year, but it didn't run. I think it had too much sushi or whatever they had down there. Or over there, or whatever there. But uh, this hasn't run it a mile in a while. But this was in Rhea. In, we were on it this day. In uh, Rio last uh, February. Naval Crown from Pogo. After these, we've got Happy Romance trying to stay on together with Happy Power. Down the outside, Song Line for Japan getting involved. Casa Creed coming home strongly as well from off the pace. It's all changed late. Happy Romance joined by Song Line. Casa Creed trying to join him with him as well. Song Line in the middle of the three goes to the line. Song Line for Japan again. Casa Creed. Oh, another. Castle Creed, you know, we were on it a couple of years ago when it won uh, eight to one, and it's 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 keeping going fairly well, but uh, it's aging like myself. So song line is is it's drawn in ten, but for a closer, uh, it should be all right if he gets position, bit of cover on the outside, and uh, should be flying it up the stretch. The outsider I picked in this was uh, De Jour. For Bob Baffert. Bob does have them right. I'm not a great lover of Bob, but you have to think that he, he'll have it ready. This is in the Del Mare. Come to the Mine. top of the lane and Over. Sumter is the one to catch, but they're closing in now alongside Visitant. I'm a gambler. On the outside, I Radio coming with a big run too. And De Jure running on late. Twist late. Wide, wide open. De Jure. De Jure strikes the front and starts to draw clear. What a performance from De Jure. Dominating. About a five-way photo here for second. Might have gone. Nice turn of foot. That's a 20 to 1 shot there. 22s with hills. Paying four places. But the selection is song line. On to the distaff. This could be the race of the of the meeting. It's nine furlongs on the dart. 11 declared. Idiomatic is uh, by Curlin in the Judmont colours. It's seven for eight. 
this year has won seven out of eight. Adair Manor has won his last nine, uh, last five. I wonder has JP anything, uh, any ownership on that? And uh, Clarier, it's uh, by Corland was tra uh, kept on training this year. Uh, but this this is going to be the tactical race of the uh, of the beaten. If we look at we look at a dear manor first in its last run, it's a lovely cruising style. But you have to look at as well as what did it beat. Uh, I bet that Desert Dawn a couple of times. Uh, well, Desert Dawn betted. Uh, Desert Dawn actually betted last year when it was in in uh, when it was a twenty five to one shot. Uh, wasn't that in the Oaks? Yeah, uh, and it was one to two, but it improved a lot this year. Uh, but uh, Desert Dawn was second to. But look at the way it, it she cruises home. Outclassing the Zenyatta field. This will be her fifth straight win and fourth great at stake. Adair Manor trots in by five lengths. Desert Dawn, Microshare, and Window Shopping. So just like um, if it's out for a gallop. Um, Idiomatic is by Corlin. The other one is by Uncle Mo. They were all uh, classic winners. But this this is a big old massive stripe. It, it reminds me a bit of like Zinyata, the way it, uh, it gallops up the stretch. Avita is in third position and idiomatic leads. Nest is fourth, far outside, and still seven from the front. Final furlong of the Judmont Spinster. Idiomatic, a five-length advantage. Bellamore, Lena Vita, then Nest in fourth. Idiomatic in front, 16th to go in the Judmont colors. Florent Giroux aboard. Idiomatic to win the grade one Judmont Spinster. Lena Vita was home set. Different style of running, but... And the other one then is Clarier. This was third in the race last year when Malathat uh, got up in the shadows of the post. We were on Malathat. We were, the bus was parked 100 yards from the line and we cheered it home. The leader, Nest, Blue Stripe, Malathat, Clarier, fifth toward the inside. Secret Oath, Blue Stripe coming forward. Clarier to the rail, Malathat to the outside. Blue Stripe has the lead. Malathat, Clarier moves up the rail, but still third. Blue Stripe, Clarier, Malathat, Clarier trying. Blue Stripe in front, Malathat is there. Blue Stripe, Clarier, Malathat, Malathat, maybe. What a finish. So that's the closer, uh, train especially for the race. So tactics is going to be important tomorrow. So I can see a dear manor going out in front and idiomatic following in second, trying to come around the come around the turn for home, uh, to try and uh, put on the indicator and tip on. Uh, and Clarier will be hoping that both of them go at breakneck speed, and she'll be picking up the pieces. Uh, as a commentator used to say one time, picking them up and laying them down. So it was trained or kept specially and trained for tomorrow's race. I'm picking idiomatic. Uh, I just think that uh, that she, it, things might suit her tomorrow. And Clarier was eight to one there earlier. It's a uh, best price seven. Uh, they're paying four plays. So that'd be a solid uh, each way play at uh, seven or eight to one if you got it. Um, I can't see being out of the first four the way they're paying it there. Um, that'd be fierce and race, but it'd be tactics and jockey, whatever they do will uh, win it. But uh, I hope Garo gets does the business. Um, move on to the turf. This is, a, as they say, a stellar field. Mustadaf 
is the five. But it seems to be better at, at a mile two. If we look at it, uh, we were on it in Ria uh, last February. That was a mile two and a half. Then it ran uh, in a mile, mile and a half, and it was seven lengths forth to Equinox. Uh, well, Equinox is a super there anyway. But the other, the two runs in England, then uh, two group ones, were a, a mile two beaten Luxembourg and ten and a half furlongs beaten Nashua. Is that good enough for him uh, to win at a mile and a half? I don't know. Uh, now, it did win in Kempton on uh, top of the ground to the Group 3, beating a, a good horse there, good or a Dubai honour. Um, August Rodan. This is what... This is the race that this was bred for. By Deep, deep Impact. That's the Japanese uh, sire. And he loved top of the ground. Concrete is what he wanted to run on. And Rhododendron, Galileo, solid. And I know I said it before that uh, uh, heavy ground sort of didn't suit it. But if you look at it, it uh, it's like it won on heavy ground when, they were, when it was a two-year-old. But it was just better as a two-year-old than the other horses. But this year on soft ground in the guineas, uh, 12th of 14, and then behind hook em good to soft, 10th of 10. So it either bombs out on shit ground or else it, it runs well. Uh, but uh, I, I'd imagine O'Brien will this have tuned to the the minute tomorrow because he'll want the world to see uh, for breeding purposes, uh, especially he'll have the, the Japanese chewing on the, on the, on the bit going into cool more. And Esther ran a great race in the Prix de l'Arc uh, likes top of the ground as well um, I'd give Bolshoi Ballet uh, this needs a mile and a half on firm, good to firm ground I've, I believe uh, I'd have that that could finish fourth tomorrow at 20 to 1 I wouldn't be surprised if you look at it the ground has been a problem, I thought, with that too. Uh, and it won the last day and it won handy. I know it was a lesser class race, but in Saratoga, it was on good ground. But any time it run on uh, good to soft or heavy, it wasn't near as good. Uh, now, it won, ran in Belmont last year. It was behind your beer, it was on firm ground. But it's just something to have in my craw. I was saying, that joke. Could now I'm not saying it'll win, but for someone that might want something with them paying four places, and it uh, just twenty five to one and uh, with the with the green bouquet. I'm on August Rodan. Uh, I think, I think they'll have it right tomorrow. They like the big day. They've won this before several times, and uh, they'll be geared up for it. Mossadaf is a front runner, but this joke. Rod, 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 should be picking it up in the stretch I would imagine uh, it's drawn in, in 5 it'll get a nice early position Mossadab will have to push on out to trap 9 to get the lead that it wants uh, Charrier is a, a Japanese horse there as well, it's fairly decent uh, King of Steel I, I think the ground could be uh, maybe too firm for it up to the Americas an American horse that they're putting up in, I thought it might go for the mile, uh, but they're putting it up here and putting it into this race. That's, there's a doubt about that staying. So, uh, um, what did I pick as my... Oh, yeah. I threw in Balsha Valley, maybe as an each way bet, but, but uh, Onesto would probably run well as well into the into a place. Uh, having run well in uh, the Prix de l'Arc. The classic. This was always the last race of. This is the first time it has been the third last race, I believe. Uh, and I think it's done for uh, UK television uh, purposes. Uh, it was won last year by Flightline, absolutely hosed up. Bob Baffert has won four of the last ten. Uh, Arabian Night is a. Uh, 
three year old and it missed well they didn't direct it through the uh, the triple crown route at all um, but I don't know what did it beat in that horse uh, you have the Japanese horse that won in uh, the World Cup the Dubai World Cup Dubai World Cup winner has never won over there first and came back then now it has gone the other way all right win in uh, the UK or in America and tip over and uh, collect over there uh, the pace I think would be Saudi crown and uh, I would I wouldn't be surprised if that runs runs into a place they were betting four places there uh, because usually the the pace in Santa Anita uh, will hold up and you have uh, uh, that Durham is uh, that the three year old. Uh, I think that beat nothing in uh, in the UAE Derby and it came over and it was no good in the uh, Kentucky Derby. And I don't think it has ran since. So I couldn't see that uh, winning without a prep run, even though it might have been fairly decent. Uh, I'm on the White Horse, White Aberro. This has improved an awful lot since it has moved to uh, Dick Duthrow. This is third trainer. But uh, it has improved the power. Just be with, uh, who is it with first? Carlos Perez. Won first time out and then it was went uh, Bet Strike Hair. That was a decent horse too. But uh, First run for Dick Duthrow, uh, it was behind Cody's Rich at a mile. But the last day when it, in the Whitney, I was impressed by the way he picked up. And he's drawn well tomorrow to fall in behind the pace. Uh, Whitney and White Aparo is the leader narrowly over Giant Game. Zandon, Cody's wish on the outside, still four lengths behind White Abario, who's running the race of his life. Look at White Abario in a red, Ortiz Jr. in a runaway. White Abario wins by almost six lengths. Zandon second, photo for... Th and obviously a four-year-old improving at this time of the year. I'm thinking that it, it, it must be the change of Burns' uh, stables, uh... That, uh, that done it but uh, two good runs there the first one was a, sort of like a pipe opener for uh, the other one um, so I have chosen White a Barrio for the win and as I said earlier maybe uh, Saudi Crown at 8 to 1 could be uh, a place bet or an each way bet seeing that I've, if anyone wants to do that we come to the sprint. Draws crucial. This is five furlongs. Uh, draws crucial. Uh, the English horse live in the dream has drawn five. Last year's winner, Caraval, who is, is drawn three this year, but has drawn ten last year, but it got the lead after 50 yards. If that gets out like it did last year, it'll create a slight problem for Living the Dream if Living the Dream can't get out as fast. There is a turn uh, as well in this, which Living the Dream wouldn't have uh, encountered. Uh, we'll just look at Caravel, uh, the way he got out of Trap 10 last year and got the lead. And he'd been trained specially for this race as well by Brad Cox. Five and a half furlongs last year. But the break in this is crucial. Air Highfield Princess, Golden Pal is still six. Caravel of Emiratiana coming up the inside. That's not what I want. I wanted this to uh, the start. There we go. And they're off in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Golden Pal broke last. 
There goes Caravelle out for the early lead. Now, Golden Pal has already moved up five or six positions, changes lanes in the blink of an eye, and moves up fifth on the outside. Two lengths off the position. Casa Creed is next to last as Casadero trails 21.91 seconds for the opening quarter. Caravelle leading a rest me red. Emirati Anna down toward the inside. Artima City Limits is there. Highfield Princess. Golden Pal is still six. Caravelle of Emirati Anna coming up the inside. Caravelle leads it. Emirati Anna up the inside to challenge. Caravelle, Emirati Anna. Creative Force runs on from third. Caravelle, Emirati Anna. Creative Force third. Caravelle and Tyler Gaffalione. That was five and a half for us last year. I think the time was 101. Um, so if you take six off that, that'd be about 40, uh, 55 for the five furlongs. So she was clipping it. Emirati Anna, former Nunthorpe winner. And the Nunthorpe winner this year is living the dream. Uh, but it's all in the break for this horse. If this horse gets out like it did the last day and it, it was rated and done all right, uh, but it's picked up later on by Arzak. Has opened up here by two lengths coming into the final furlong. Bad beat Brian, then Arzak. Now Arzak is running fast on the outside. Live in the dream still has the lead though. And Arzak running out of time. Here comes Arzak again. Arzak this time running by for the lead for Joel Rosario. Beer Can Man is running late center of the course. Arzak to win. The that was over five and a half. So it died uh, in the last half of furlong. My actual pick for the race. Is Aesop's Fable. I thought it was a very much improved run. If you look at this horse uh, from the start, uh, it, it won first time out, which is always a good sign from O'Brien's horses. Won then at a group two over seven furlongs. Um, they put a back sprint in this year, but in the Prix de Labby, they put a visor on it. It was 66 to 1. And it's drawn out on the outside. But it finished like a train. In third place. And if 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 that brought it on a bit. I think this could be finishing fast tomorrow. With a, with the burning yeah, speed it will be. It's way a second from the left on the Highfield outside. Highfield Princess flies now. Pernica Highfield Princess. And Highfield Princess has come through. And Highfield Princess gets up to win it. Close call second. Perdica in a photo. It finished like a train. Moore will, will, will get a, will know it better. Uh, it's drawn in eight. So he could get a middle a middle position and uh, he could be uh, finishing fast. And I think I think Caravelle at 7-1 to one there or 11-2, 6-1. to one, I think that's uh, as the uh, the champion. That's uh, the each way of playing the game. But uh, Aesop's Fables at 12-1 to one is... Uh, it's what I have backed. Uh, there's one more, isn't there? We were on elite power last year at eight. I think it won at, was it six or 11 to two? Uh, and I think that's the one that's going to uh, be hard beaten again. Uh, Judman, Billy Moss, Good combination. If you look at it was beaten in his first two and the only time it was beaten then was in the last one which was over seven furlongs by Gunite and it had beaten Gunite previously at six furlongs in Saratoga. So it'll be cherry ripe uh, Billy Moss will have it right uh, for tomorrow. Uh, that one in Ria as well it beat Gunite over six um, and I think the one that will put it, put it up to it is Speedboat Coach so this will be sort of a reverse forecast job uh, this hadn't run all year long from the 4th of December last year to the 30th of September uh, but 
but it battled well to the line to put a cherry ripe for Bob Baffert. And from the back of the field, American Theorem, very wide. They're at the top of the stretch, and Speedboat Beach and Dr. Shivel are head and head. Dr. Shivel just in front, Speedboat Beach, and here's Fort Bragg finishing strongly in the center of the racetrack. Dr. Shivel and Speedboat Beach are head and head coming for the wire. Dr. Shivel or Speedboat Beach, here's the line. Dr. Shivel has won the Santa Anita Sprint Championship. And I think he'll turn the tables on that with a run under his belt and a bit of time. Uh, so that's it. That has been a look at the Breeders' Cup for 2023. We'll see how we do. Uh, don't eat the head of me if we get nothing right and we might get something right and we'd, I don't know. But I've done my best over the for the couple of days anyway, uh, to see can we make a pound. So uh, this it's twenty past eight now. Better get this into the oven, and it's nearly ready for the off at nine o'clock. Uh, so bash the bookies over and out. I don't know what's the story for tomorrow. I might I might see the there's a grand national on in, in Cork on Sunday. Uh, see what's on. If not, I'll post it up here. And if, I'll post whatever, if I might spot something in, at England, if what's on in the morning or not. Good luck.